Will. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for joining CEO Wise. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Now, you uh, have a very successful uh, company called Artemis Brands, uh, importing baby brands such as Corbell and uh, Baby Brezza, and the most important one um, being, or the one that you started your, your company with, with Nook. Now, um, did you start from the very beginning uh, wanting to get into the baby market? Um, no. Um, there are a couple of opportunities and that present oneself in life. Um, and I was working for a company that had the agency for Nook. Um, it was a pharmaceutical company, natural pharmaceutical company. And they essentially um, were headed in that direction, natural pharmaceuticals. Nook, on the one hand, needed a, a low cost, needed a different strategy and a, a different base, a different, um, a different operating model than, for example, the pharmaceutical. So a conflict developed between the two, the, the, the two companies. Um, I found myself defending the company when I was talking to the, the, the Nook principles and then defending the Nook brand when I was talking to my employers. And it, it was a conflicting situation. Um, and then the opportunity came that um, Nook was then taken out of the pharmaceutical company. And I happened to be in the right place at the right time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm really grateful for that opportunity. Uh, when you started with Nook, you realized that um, the cer that certain products were confusing for you and your sales team. And then you decided to repackage them into the different colors for different age groups. How did that simple change um, affect your ROI? We came to the um, a situation or a, or a plan where we, we ordered things so that the consumer could understand mm -hmm. what they needed. And then when they understood what they needed, then they could find what, what, mm -hmm. what they had to buy. Um, and with this organization, um, for example, different hole sizes for different um, flow rates mm -hmm of liquid so for example breast milk to consume 70 grams of breast milk on the breast it'll take around about 500 and 569 sucking motions with 53 pauses in 13 minutes so what Nook did is they put breast milk in a bottle and they made the hole to match the work mm -hmm. rate and that we call our breast milk teat mm -hmm. then they did the same with formula in the bottle and that's our formula teat mm -hmm. so by packaging this and explaining that you get a breast milk teat for breast milk and a formula teat for formula and then because the head of the child or the oral cavity of the child changes quite dramatically in the first six months in fact the skull is the fastest growing part of the baby in the first six months so what ha what you've got is a size one uh, which is 0 to six months and a size mm. two which is six to eighteen months so by giving these different age groups, 0 to 6 months, 6 mm. to 18 months, and the different hole size, you could then work out whether you were feeding breast milk to a eight month old, you knew what to buy. Whereas before that, it was very confusing. Mm. So by organizing, we had a dramatic impact on sales. In fact, after the relaunch, we grew 90% wow. in the first year. And that it could have been a lot more but we just couldn't forecast mm. and we couldn't get the stock in fast enough to cope oh. with the demand so i reckon we could have actually grown at 200 percent had we mm. had we been able to forecast the response and and did that um was that it, did you do that in conjunction with the head office in germany or was that initiative coming from from your side or, and did you only repackage it here in south africa so the the repackaging um so the the understanding came from them in terms of their product okay. design but their packaging was very suited to the German market at the time yeah. and completely unsuited to our market. Mm -hmm. So we, they took a huge step and allowed us to go off in a different direction. Um, so our packaging was unique to us okay. and um, the whole combination, you know, w w the, there was a synergy that just worked and okay. it, it, it really, in 1993, 94, uh, in fact, 95, we launched and it, it had a huge impact. For entrepreneurs wanting to import uh, products into South Africa, what factors should they be aware of? I think 
the the absolute key is there has to be a need for the product be very careful of over committing many products one brings in from China they say yes how many containers would you like now <laughs> a container doesn't come cheap and it's all priced in dollars so one needs to find a way to start small um, and, 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 and build a demand if one cannot get a, a, a listing as it were mm. at a big retailer or a key, a key account okay and then you touch on the retail space I know uh, Many entrepreneurs would like to get into the retail space and, as well, and you have your brands in the small retailers as well as the large retailers. How, how do they approach um, the retail space in order to get in, and are the larger retailers more difficult to conquer? The larger retailers are very difficult because, to conquer because they need surety, security of supply, but they also need security of, of sales. Okay. They need to sell it out. So to, for them to buy it in is easy and expensive, but they need to, there needs to be a good reason. So they need to get the offtake. So invariably they want to see what is the marketing activity behind the brand, how much is being spent, and depending on, on the research, success maybe in other markets, um, getting it into the other retailers. Ideally one wants to find the opinion leading, uh, you get opinion leaders in terms of consumers, um, but you also get an opinion lead in terms of retailers. So those retailers that are at the cutting edge, that are supplying the new stuff, um, those are the guys who don't want to stock your normal um, items that might be available in, in your mass retailers. They want more the, un the niche. Mm. So you've got to identify those retailers who then will, will go with you and partner with you and grow the brand with you. And then at a certain point you'll decide to then go okay. on a bigger scale. Okay. So it's best to start small and, and grow organically into the larger retail. Absolutely. Are you continually looking for brands to import into South Africa or um, are you happy with the set of brands that you have and focusing on those? It's very difficult. Our market is extremely competitive in the baby category. Yeah. We have a large number of brands for the size of our market. Our market is absolutely saturated. We get new brands coming in and coming and going quite regularly mm. um, and that comes with people having a good idea and wanting to get mm. into a market but not understanding the retail environment where the retailer doesn't want new brands because he doesn't have space for them and he doesn't want his space to be used while somebody tries something new. Mm. So it's a, it's a very competitive space, one really needs to spend more time understanding the retail environment and the consumer need mm. versus what else is available uh, before one uh, brings those in. So a short answer is yes, we are looking for more, mm. but it's very difficult. Okay, great, <laughs> excellent. That's it.